Today's video is going to be a long overdue update on what's been going on since my last upload. I'm going to be telling you exactly why final year has been so so busy and filling you in on exactly what happens in your final year of medical school. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name's Hiba and I'm a final year medical student studying at the University of Manchester. There is genuinely so much to talk about. I'm going to try and go through it in like a chronological order just so it all makes sense because there is literally so much of it. But just as an overview, at this point I have sat my finals a couple months ago and a while ago also found out that I passed my finals. I've also been through the whole process of ranking jobs and applying for foundation um, and I've received my job allocation as well. So I'm going to be going through all of that with you and as always if there is only one particular part of fifth year that you want to hear about then you can skip to that using the timestamps in the description. So let's just get straight to it. What is final year of medical school like? If there is just one word that I could use to describe final year, it would be busy. Just so busy and so hectic. I can't believe it's already over. It's one of those weird times when, you know when each day just feels really, really long, but then as the days and the weeks are passing by, you genuinely can't tell where the time is going. That's how I feel about the entirety of final year. Okay, so let's start off by talking about placements and then we'll get into talking about the various exams that go on in final year of med school. So in Manchester, in your final year, you have kind of five blocks of placement. You have four placements in your first semester, then you sit your finals, then you have one kind of research block and then you have your fifth and final clinical placement. In terms of the four placements that you have before finals, everyone has something quite similar. So everyone will have a GP block, a general medical block, a um, surgical block, so any surgical uh, specialty like trauma and orthopedics or urology, vascular surgery, and then you have your acute block, which can be any acute specialty, so something like A&E, ICU, things like that. After your finals, that fifth and final clinical placement is kind of a student selected one where you can choose to arrange it in any specialty that you're interested in. So what differences can you expect to notice in your final year placements versus your placements in previous years? In final year, your placements feel different in that you're doing a a lot more and you're just way more involved than you were in third and fourth year. In third and fourth year I felt like all I did was observe and beyond doing very basic jobs like doing bloods or doing the occasional cannula there wasn't really much else to do. However in final year there was a lot of emphasis and focus on getting you to do the actual day-to-day -day work of a foundation doctor that you're going to be doing next year and in most universities this is called assistantship. So during your fifth year placements you're expected to go in and just do the jobs that the foundation doctors are doing. So go in, start looking at the patient's notes, start kind of forming an idea of what's going on with them and then go on the ward round with the doctor but instead of just observing and seeing what the doctors are doing like you did in third and fourth year you're actually the one kind of examining the patient in the ward round feeding back what you think to your consultant and then trying to come together with your consultant to form a management plan for the patient giving your input as to what you think should be changed in their management plan and then attending the MDTs and then in the afternoons doing the jobs that are coming out of the ward round in particular I noticed a difference in the type of jobs that we were being asked to do versus in third and fourth year just doing a blood test or a cannula. In final year, at least on my placements, there was a lot of emphasis on getting the final year medical students to call different colleagues in the hospital and call different departments to get things arranged to be done for patients. So for example, arranging scans for a patient or there was a lot of um, kind of pushing the final year medical students to get experience in making those phone calls and, and organising those things because that's what you're going to be doing as a doctor in the next year. Also doing things like discharge paperwork, which I was never asked to do before my fifth year. These are things that I thought made placement in final year really different to placement experience that we've had in the previous years. And that's probably why fifth year felt like it went by so quickly because each day of placement didn't drag like it used to sometimes, well most of the time in previous years um, because there was just so much to do and so much that you could be getting on with. Um, I would literally look at the clock and it would be 10 to 9 and then I'd look at it again and then it would be a quarter to 12 and 
I, I just think like how have I already been here for three hours and this is probably going to sound a bit silly but in fifth year I could genuinely feel the transition happening from medical student to doctor from a student who was just sat down on her laptop learning about different conditions to someone who had that knowledge in the back of their head but then also needed to combine that with the practicalities of arranging things in hospital making things happen ordering tests just the practical side of working the electronic system and I could feel my confidence increasing day by day when I first started in my first kind of week or so of um, final year I felt like I didn't know enough to be in final year and I was extremely nervous about examining patients on my own and throughout the year I could actually feel my confidence in those tasks increasing so that is something I think you will notice in final year if you are just about to enter your final year. In final year in terms of placements we also had additional sign-offs for the fifth year students that weren't sign-offs for the lower years so things like suturing and administering oxygen or um, taking a blood culture, those things in our university were only sign-offs that are done by final years. It may be different at other universities. So enough on that, but just all in all, you'll find your placements a lot more enjoyable because you actually feel like you're making a difference rather than you know, just standing there on the sidelines. Moving on to talking about some exams. So in final year, the fact that you have several different assessments going on dotted across your final year, each with a kind of month, month and a half gap between them, really contributes to uh, making final year feel really busy. Obviously, you need to be preparing for these exams uh, because they really, really matter. But then you also have your placement going on at the same time where you're essentially doing the job of a foundation doctor. So in final year, more than ever you are literally just studying in your spare time and because of this one kind of downside of final year was I genuinely felt like I had no social life whatsoever it was just really hard to fit other things in including making youtube videos I felt like these final year exams just had to be kept as the first priority so the first exam that comes up which I know there's um, a lot of uncertainty around whether or not this will count for the next cohort of medical students applying for foundation jobs is the SJT now you'll probably know this is a really important exam because it makes up 50% of your score um, which is used to then rank you across medical students nationally and the other 50% is made up of your performance in medical school assessments and it's a really strange exam because rather than a exam of knowledge it's more so an exam of employability and whether or not you understand the values set by the GMC. If you notice that I've I keep moving around, my leg keeps going to sleep, I'm sat on the floor, I don't know why I do it, I should just sit on a chair, I literally have a sofa behind me, why do I not sit on that? So yeah, sorry if I'm moving around, I just need to readjust. So you can choose to either sit this exam in December or in January, there's two exam sittings, but most people prefer to sit it in December and just get it out of the way, so that's exactly what I chose to do. And that meant that I started revising around a month before December which meant that after starting final year in September I started studying for the SJT around the end of October so around about a couple months into starting final year you were already kind of worrying about revising for this really big exam that counts for 50% of your score for your foundation job. In February we found out our SJT score it was released early by mistake some of you may know and I got a score of 45.555 just sharing because I know some people may want to know score Let's just let this plane take off in the background. So for me, as I mentioned, I sat SJT in December in the Christmas holidays and then we only had a month gap before we had to sit the PSA, which is the prescribing safety assessment that is sat by all fifth year medical students across the whole of the UK. PSA was on the 3rd of February, so literally again, just about a month in between. And that month was then completely dedicated to revising for the PSA, obviously after placement. So all this time placements are still going on. You're still needing to get your sign offs done and all of that. So so all I would do after placement is literally just come home and then do loads and loads of prescribing questions, lots of prescribing practice. It's obviously a really important exam because without passing it you can't prescribe and not being able to prescribe 
as a doctor is a bit pointless. In the end, it went well. I passed with a score of 91.5%. So then once our PSA was done, we had our finals. So both our writtens and our practical finals scheduled for March. So start of February was PSA and then March was finals, uh, mid-March. As you can tell, this year it just felt like exam after exam after exam. Every time we'd be done, with one exam, we'd be left with just the right amount of time to revise for the next one. It just felt like it was never ending. Between the PSA and the actual finals, we also had a mock exam as well that is an internal mock that is set by our university to allow you to get an idea of how well you're doing with your revision. So that was also something that was going on at the time that I had to study for. And in February, I was also preparing for a conference that I was attending and presenting at. So I was also trying to juggle doing a bit of research at the time and it just further made it more difficult to make YouTube videos at the time. I did vlog the conference and I am going to be uploading that on my channel. So then finally in March we sat our finals and I know I'm breaking it down month by month so first this happened then this happened then this happened but when it comes to actual finals I was actually doing a small amount of work each day since the start of final year so I was working through the content at a steady pace alongside everything else that I've mentioned. I knew that there was so much content and I just didn't want to leave it until the last minute, until the other exams are out of the way. So I'd be doing 30, 40 past my questions a day. But then when the PSA was over, that's when it was finally time to go all in with finals revision. Not long after, three weeks after we sat them, we got our results back and thankfully I have passed my finals. I feel like I should say how I feel about it. You're probably thinking like she is so unexcited about that but it's it's been a while since then so I've I've had all of the excitement come and go. I'm just so glad I don't have to sit another medical school exam again because it was it was rough at some points. Um, <laughs> okay, moving on to talking a bit about the foundation job process. Now, I don't want to make it confusing, but I didn't know how else to put this. The process of applying for final year, if you go slightly back in time, starts in the September of final year, so in the first month when you start fifth year. So September was when the job application process opened and that's when you first started filling out the application process. And this is when we also received our decile, which it may not work like this for the years to come because they may be changing it, but your decile is basically what tenth you're in based on your performance compared to everyone else in that year. And then across final year, throughout all of those different national exams and also internal exams that are going on. You also have little updates happening with the job application process and you have to kind of keep up to date with that as well. So that also keeps you quite busy in final year. Once you sat the SJT, your ranking for deaneries open. So I think that was in January and you basically have to rank all of the different deaneries in the UK, which are areas of the UK that you'd like to work in. As you may have noticed, the silly thing about that is that you have to do it before you have your SJT score. So although you have your decile, you don't have the other half of your score which is going to be used to allocate you to the actual deaneries and that 50% can completely sway your existing 50% so you can't really make an informed decision you just have to guess where you think you'll get in. I ranked Northwest as my first choice deanery because I wanted to stay in Manchester and then in February when we received our SJT scores that was added to the EPM, the decile to give you your overall um, score. For us because the SJT was released early by accident we had to still wait another couple of weeks before we found out the deanery and that caused a lot of chaos but yeah in March I found out that I got Northwest Deanery which I was really happy about. So then once you receive the deanery you then have to rank all of the trusts in the deanery which are basically groups of hospitals that you'd like to work at and to do this um, you have like a time limit so you can't just do it whenever you want. I think when it came to ranking the trusts we had about five days to make our decisions. Those five days all of this was going on during the week of my finals so it was really difficult to juggle doing last minute revision for finals and cramming everything in versus spending time thinking about where you'd like to go and what hospital you'd like to work at and you know this hospital versus this hospital the pros and cons like it was a lot going on at the same time and then i think at the end of march it was that we found out that 
uh, we found out our trust and I found out that I was going to MFT, Manchester University NHS Foundation Trust, which was my first choice trust. And then probably the hardest part of the whole ranking process is when you found out which trust you're going to, you then rank every individual job available in that trust. Gosh, it's just painful to even think about it. And I think you had a week to look through every single possible job being offered by that trust and all the different combinations of specialties and all the different variations in the jobs and then rank all of them based on your preferences. And then they run an algorithm and then naturally whoever has the highest scores will get their first choice and, and so forth. And then at the end of the whole process, you're allocated a job, which is basically non-negotiable. Whatever job you're given is the job that you have to do. So I think it was the 13th of April that we found out our final jobs and I will be working at North Manchester General Hospital over my foundation years. The job that I got was, I think my sixth choice job out of I think there was around 42 jobs. When it came to choosing jobs, I really wanted to do a pediatrics job in foundation year two. When I was ranking it, I thought to myself that was the most important thing to me. So all of the jobs with pediatrics in FY2, I put them at the top of the list. Right at the very top of my list, I put the pediatrics jobs um, at Royal Manchester Children's Hospital because RMCH is the biggest pediatric hospital in the whole of the UK. And it would have been an amazing experience to work over there at such an early point in training but it was obviously really competitive for the reason I just mentioned so I ended up getting this job which had paediatrics but at North Manchester instead um, which I'm incredibly grateful for considering the fact that many people have to relocate across the UK to work for their foundation jobs the fact that I got my first choice trust and a job with paediatrics which was my top priority um, I'm extremely grateful for since then the job application process is still keeping me really busy because every other day we have some sort of form to fill out um some sort of step to do in the recruitment process we also a while back had our gmc id check which is when the gmc came to our university and checked all of our ids which just made it feel so real and that's another thing you can expect to happen if you're going into your final year so as you can see final year is incredibly jam-packed there's so much going on several different exams lots of different steps you need to take in order to start your foundation jobs it keeps you really busy and i hope i've been able to give you an overview as to why i had to be away for some time but yeah i hope i was able to give you the the update that you deserved. For anyone else who's watching, not for an update, but just to find out what happens in final year, hopefully this has been somewhat useful. Thank you so, so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.